Okay, <laughs> so I guess that means uh, uh, the floor is mine. Uh, I must say I hate this moment on Zoom when everybody goes mute and when all the uh, lively um, faces disappear, then it all of a sudden becomes a monologue. I think there is a technical really uh, deficit in that. <laughs> Emmanuel showed himself again, uh, because also sound wise, uh, you really collapse into yourself. Uh, nevertheless, I, I really try to imagine you um, and, and think of this uh, indeed as a conversation. Uh, at least it was also announced to me like this. So I'm really happy to, uh, to join you. And uh, also because um, in my present role, I of course have more distance to students, artists, teachers than I ever had, uh, which is a big loss in my career, but I wanted to gain power. So I guess that's the, that's the prize. The one thing that I still do in a very close to um, the processes of artists is I indeed also accompany a couple of um, PhDs. Um, and you know maybe that in Zurich we don't have the um, right to award doctorates. Uh, that means we are collaborating with a lot of other universities in able to uh, increase or, or, or uh, expand our PhD area. And since I'm the head of the dossier uh, Forschung, the research dossier, which means the kind of uh, research for the overall ZHDK, um, I have a big um, uh, responsibility in how we make politics in there. And it's really my aim to build structures within the ZHDK that serve artists. <laughs> I think that's a dangerous thing to say in the university because our structures have become increasingly bureaucratic, complex, um, heavy, um, but my source really is um, uh, to do this for a purpose, which is um, outside of the university and not so much inside of the university. So I assume, and I don't know exactly who is now listening. Um, I mean, I really don't know who you are, but I assume that you are all artists and I assume that you have a practice and I assume that you operate in very different contexts um, depending to your, your mission, who you are, um, the opportunities that you got and that you have this kind of common ground that you, um, that you did a PhD or you do a PhD and come together in that, um, in that framework. Um, when Emmanuel and, 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 and Lena uh, told me about, uh, about uh, this session, um, I understood that uh, it was specifically concerned with um, the question of collaboration and networking um, in, in the performing arts and in artistic research. So I decided for myself also to do myself a pleasure <laughs> to take you on a, on a little tour. And so what I'm telling is really particular, it's personal. And I'm trying to kind of offer you three different dimensions to this uh, topic or to this cluster of uh, themes. Um, and of course, I don't know how that resonates with your own um, thoughts and also with your own um, desires and necessities, but maybe you find um, um, entries and we can discuss later um, how this works out. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen with you because I also have a, uh, let me see. I don't know, I have to do this again. Right. <laughs> uh, I have a couple of images that help me uh, uh, through, the, through the narrative and I'm, I'm improvising. I do this out of my heart and my head. Um, and I want to start actually where my own professional life started because it's um, very much entangled with, um, with um, let's say the idea of networks the, the power of networks and the, the desire to build structures beyond local contexts. And um, I think for many of you that might really not be new and, and that might have also been participating in these networks. But I was um, um, a student in, in, in Berlin um, uh, when Berlin still was surrounded by, uh, by a wall. And um, from there, I slowly made my way into a more European 
uh, world of, uh, of uh, performing arts productions. And it was a time in the 80s when um, uh, you could say um, kind of a, um, a wave started of, uh, I would say from today's point of view, old guys <laughs> um, that were uh, in the early 90s um, uh, 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 understanding or discovering the possibility to organize themselves in a network. And one of the networks that has really um, informed my work and my life a lot is the so-called informal European theater meeting. I guess that at least I, I suppose Emmanuel has been there maybe a couple of times. Later on, this network was uh, referred to as the mafia. Um, but it started very, very small. And I think it's, 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 I mean, for me in my experience, because I was already the younger generation in that network, you could still feel that sense of a number of people that um, were collaborating with each other in artistic projects and all of a sudden discovered um, it makes sense if they come together, if they talk, if they exchange, and if they organize themselves in a more structured way. And um, it's interesting because the myth of IETM is still on their website, I discovered. Uh, and I have heard that tale or that um, spirit of a small group of people sometime in the summer festival, Polverici in Italy, uh, many, many times. So I think for the first maybe 15 or 20 years, that network was really carried by um, a narrative that was uh, 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 springing from, from individuals that had a position in the professional field and that found a way to organize themselves in a different way. And I think this was the birth of um, um, a, a culture of European co-productions and later pan-European co-productions um, that wasn't evident at that time. And that is now a kind of common sense in the more international performing arts world. But then it was a small structure. It was very particular. You could really name the people, um, but their mission was to not only serve themselves, but to grow something that becomes, you could say, an institutionalized uh, engine. And although ITM is um, up to today uh, considering itself uh, a membership organization, which it is, it has grown into an organization of, I think, 500 or 600 members with a lot of sub uh, 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 structures, with a lot of output that is a service to the field. Um, but somehow they cling on to the idea that it's self-made and steered by a certain group of people. And what is interesting for me, here you see uh, in a way what they're advertising with. What is interesting for me is that um, a network that has come into existence in such a particular way has grown into a force um, that is also very explicit about, you could say the benefits, what happens if you join that network that is now absolutely beyond people introducing each other to a very particular, a certain, circle of, um, you could almost say certain circle of friends. Um, and looking at, I don't want to, I'm not telling this story to, to qualify or disqualify uh, a network like ITM. For me, it's just an example that played a very important role in my uh, professional and also personal uh, life because it indeed introduced me to many people um, that were enabling me uh, to do my work, uh, to find connections, uh, to find jobs in the end, and to probably be where I am now, although I'm not uh, an arts professional anymore, but an educational professional. But the network, you could say, worked. Um, in the beginning, I said um, uh, people at a certain time used also to refer to such a network as the mafia. That means that at the same time, while we as a group of people that were, um, I was on the board of this network for a couple of years as well, that we were deeply involved in um, making this network uh, productive. It was also perceived by other people as the absolute opposite. 
So if you don't belong to that network, you have a problem. If you're not part of the circle of friends, if you're not part of the circle of um, activities that this network generates, you have a problem, you're out. And I must say, um, in retrospect, uh, I have very few people actually with whom I discuss or with whom I have an honest talk about what is the other thing that we produced when we strengthened that network. I put here an image of um, um, a magazine, Theaterschrift, which I was for many years uh, part of the editorial board. This was uh, clearly one of the uh, um, uh, productions or the, the, the products of, uh, of the, the spirit and the operations of this network. It was a, a four lingual um, uh, content uh, provider uh, that was a cooperation between Felix Meritis in Amsterdam, Hebel Theater in Berlin, Kai Theater in Brussels, Theater am Turm in Frankfurt and Wiener Festwochen. And um, we were actually um, very committed and very um, 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 convinced um, that we want to produce, we want to reflect the aesthetic practices that came into being. We wanted to strengthen the uh, international co-productions and find articulations for it. So you could say it was a form of research. It was definitely a form of very deep and useful and, and, and productive uh, reflection. But of course, it was also setting new standards. It was also setting norms um, that were quite powerful and that were quite articulated against other norms. We were not having a sense of that these kind of operations, a powerful network, a uh, 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 let's say content driven contextualization of our work could also function as a gatekeeper, could also function as an instrument that excludes many other perspectives. And the, in the end would therefore be really um, a, a system of power. Um, what I miss in my own generation and in my old field is that we actually also have the guts to go back to these times, to go back to these um, um, yeah, really ways of working with each other uh, and looking at our own blind spots. I think we were always considering ourselves as the pioneers, as the avant-garde, um, really as the forefront of, uh, of innovations. Um, and we were not really self-reflective in also looking at the downside of it. And I think it's still a struggle in that field, at those places, in those networks, to acknowledge that we have also been complicit in producing what we now consider uh, a huge um, uh, reality of inequality in the arts and culture. And I'm not saying this to kind of, as an act of self uh, 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 exquisition, um, but I really think there is a, there is a gap. And um, uh, Lena said that I'm one of the founders of uh, Das Arts, which is a rather, let's say, successful art school in, uh, in, uh, in, in Amsterdam, it still exists. It has just opened uh, uh, the vacancy of an artistic director, so whoever would like to apply. Um, but that school was considered a school that comes out of exactly that network, out of exactly that scene. And also in that school, we were reproducing what we um, um, uh, have been producing in the field. And we had very little capacity, very little self-reflection to be critical enough, uh, also acknowledge that we were limited and we were limiting others. So that was the first part of my, um, um, let's say, um, um, uh, introduction to you. Uh, well, no, here. Here's the second one. 
Uh, now we jump a little bit because the, the 80s and, and the, let's say the power and the, and the, and the blossom of uh, co-productions and collaborations uh, is one side. Um, the other side that formed me and that also informs my work in my position now um, is that in the Netherlands, I, I, uh, I was very deeply embedded in the, uh, in the professional scene. Um, I did a lot of cultural politics and of uh, collaboration with artists' colleagues next to my job at, as a professor at the Art Academy. Um, and I would like to recall with you uh, an interesting moment in the Netherlands, which was in the beginning of um, uh, 2013, 2014, when in the Netherlands, we uh, uh, went into a deep crisis of uh, very fierce budget cuts. Uh, at that time, there was the very right-wing populist um, um, uh, uh, political uh, uh, wind uh, climate. And they were cutting actually 40% of the structural budgets of the, of the arts and specifically of the performing arts. Um, of course, we were uh, as a field um, very active, we were screaming, we were demonstrating, uh, but we also had to realize that actually the, uh, the society uh, wasn't very concerned. They had other problems they had to worry about. So there was very little uh, support and feedback from the society that could compensate for the cuts. For us as arts practitioners, um, that was a very important sign to understand that we can continue to complain and to battle with politics, but we can probably also do something else. And there again, I come to a, a different dimension of collaboration or different dimension of, um, of uh, networking. So what happened at that moment is that a small group of people, and I was one of them, uh, started to politicize themselves and started to politicize the field in a different way than we had done until so far. We decided not so much that we would stop talking to politics, but, but we decided that self-organization and actually starting a dialogue among our own people and looking for alternatives, how we want to work and how we want to position ourselves in the society and in the field is a much better investment than banging on doors that are actually closed. So um, that group of people um, um, founded together, um, uh, you could say a, an initiative. Maybe it was a network, but it only existed for one and a half years and then we killed it. It was called the agenda. So that's the Dutch word for the agenda or the schedule. Um, and in uh, uh, a period of, let's say a year, we had monthly meetings, I mean, very basic, you could say, uh, where we were simply in open space or fishbowl formats, um, really claimed that we have to relearn, re-exercise how we can talk to each other and how we can develop factual alternatives to the cultural politics that was in place and probably also to our sense of practice that was in place. Um, the quote here uh, is not so important. Um, Lotte is uh, Lotte van den Berg. Uh, you know her maybe as a, as a theater maker. She was one of, uh, of the very active members of this uh, initiative. Um, and from this initiative of the agenda, there was another initiative that we founded actually together with the colleagues in Belgium. It was called the Kulturparlament van de Lage Lande the cultural parliament of the low countries. And again, also this was a very important initiative to actually withdraw from the ways of talking, from the ways of organizing ourselves that the politicians would um, put on us and to turn our backs to, um, let's say the, 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 the standards and the status quo and rethink um, how we can operate ourselves. And we were really um, 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 working towards uh, designing very concrete proposals, how to uh, work differently with each other and how to um, 
make different kind of uh, proposals to the Arts Council and to the other uh, cultural political bodies than the ones that were at the table. And what you see here actually is one of the bigger gatherings that we did in, uh, in Belgium. Uh, and the way we were working was always very um, democratic, pragmatic. So working with proposals, voting on proposals, uh, discussing proposals, and then working out proposals and see how we can uh, submit them. Uh, so the agenda, uh, uh, Kulturparlament van der Lage London, I would say they were maybe like ITM, small networks, um, moments of uh, people with strong affinities that found themselves, uh, that decided to act, and that really um, realized that um, working towards alternatives is a much better way to, to organize yourself than running against people um, that are not uh, listening to yourself. Um, I think what is important to me as well to say here is that um, it was a work across sectors. So uh, it was the performing arts, but we had people from many, many different um, genres or, 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 or forms of organizations or forms of uh, aesthetics. It was really extremely diverse. Um, and in Belgium, they managed something that we did not manage in Holland. Um, they were as a spring of from these um, movements, uh, also organizing themselves across the sectors. So they actually were um, extending their self-organization to other sectors of the public domain, like healthcare, like education, because they were actually facing the same kind of budget cuts, backlash, discomfort with politics. And they have a very successful organization, which is called Hart uh, Hart, that still exists, um, which I think is even uh, um, succeeding to, to uh, to make themselves relevant from the position of arts and culture in an in, in a extremely powerful way. Um, for me, one of the springs of that kind of self-organization or that kind of acting out in networks and collaborations from the position of arts and culture was that I started with a couple of people to engage very actively in fair practice. Uh, it's probably something that also exists in Finland or in Scandinavia. And here you see that in many different countries, um, there is already an initiative to, uh, to um, organize themselves with, let's say, fair initiatives. And I think what they all have in common is that um, there is a growing sense of defining working conditions in an ethical way um, and getting ready to actually, um, how do you say this, um, Selbstverpflichtung to oblige yourself to follow those codes or to follow those rules. And again, not wait for politics or not wait for politicians anymore until they have approved it, but actually start bottom up from our own context and our own situations to, to make those things happen. So this might be far away from the, let's say, key issue that you have in common, the artistic research. But I, as I consider you as artists, I think the, 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 the um, self-direction um, towards how do you uh, shape, um, how do you design, how do you support your working conditions um, is for artists and artist researchers one of our crucial and one of our core concerns. Um, and for me, there is a, a, a continuing uh, or, or, or a, a continuous um, a connection between how you might organize yourself in the studio or in the classroom um, and how you organize yourself in um, the field and how you organize yourself in social and political context. And what I hope for and what I let's say work for, is that the connection, the, the ethical connection between those is very strong and that the difference between what we, what we um, treasure, um, what we take care of and what we stand for in our private 
studio or classroom situations can be transformed and can be transmitted to other contexts. And here I come to, uh, to my last dimension, which is indeed uh, concerned with artistic research. So I think I have put myself um, the task, and, and of course, that's, that's also a struggle, um, to continuously think how I translate this uh, source that I'm working from, the, the experience of networks and corporations as, as I've sketched it in the, in the 80s dimension, and also the critical revisiting of it, um, the power of self-organization and the political necessity of it, as I've sketched it in the, in the moments of, of crisis in the, in the arts field in the Netherlands and, uh, and Belgium, to an institutional context. And um, here I just want to um, sketch for you very briefly um, 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 the last um, uh, task that I had set myself in the Netherlands. And I'm speaking of that because I have more evidence of that than of anything else. Um, I've been founding a graduate school together with colleagues uh, does graduate school with uh, three master programs and with um, uh, 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 the field of research as well. And within research, I have um, uh, started to uh, design a pre-doc program, which is called THIRD. And here in uh, Zurich, I'm trying something similar. So also last year in Zurich, we have founded a pre-doc program, which is called PEERS. Uh, they are not the same. But let's say the reasoning is uh, the universities that I work, they don't have um, uh, promotionsrecht, they don't have uh, uh, the right to award doctorates. And although we, we, we want the right to award doctorates, <laughs> it also has a positive side because the lack of structure and the lack of institutional uh, legitimization has forced us again to invent something. It has forced us to kind of make a stand and say, well, if, if, the, if, if it isn't, if it isn't there, what is it that we would need? Or what is it that we would want? And in Amsterdam, we have deliberately with the artists that are interested in advanced and rigorous research, um, we have decided not to found a doctoral program, but to found a structure which enables them to prepare, for example, for application for a doctorate program, but probably also for something else, some other context. So um, that thing is called third. Um, it, it is uh, at the moment um, uh, directed by uh, the present uh, leader of this graduate school, Laura Cole. Uh, but until half a year, it was directed by Shadorov, who maybe some of you might know. Um, and, and I'm happy to say that she goes to Sweden, to Stockholm for a while. Uh, Shadorov is an, um, yeah, how could I say? <laughs> She's an extraordinary person. Uh, and without her, it would never have been possible to, to, de to, to create CERT and to create the kind of pedagogy that uh, we were interested in. So um, third is, um, is, you could say, a program where people participate um, in cohorts. Uh, we take or they take uh, between five and six people each year. Um, they, for a period of two years, um, let's say, participate in a program, but um, it's not so much a program program in the sense that they are residential and that they follow a schedule, but it's a program that has certain, you could say, cornerstones um, and uh, people that are in it that come together for so-called quarterlies, maybe similar to your uh, postdoc uh, situation and spend three to four days together, four times a year. And next to that, they get mentored. Um, the reason why I bring third up, um, uh, we have had a rather beautiful research grant to actually develop third as a, I, I would say, a pedagogy in third cycle education, 
is that through third, we have learned how incredibly um, important and how incredibly uh, fulfilling it is when actually you take out the whole idea of uh, the fact that there are teachers or maybe even tutors. So all the people that are in third are um, grown-ups. Um, one of them actually is Jennifer Lacey, who is now the head of the Master of um, Dance in uh, Uni Arts in, uh, in Stockholm. Uh, they all come with their own practices, how they would um, uh, like to relate to each other as practitioners, as artists researchers, as peers, and they don't need anybody to tell them, but they do have an incredible interest um, to um, 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 fill a new space together and to use each other for that shared practice or that shared um, reflection uh, within their research uh, processes. So here uh, we have listed, let's say, the kind of uh, support that uh, third uh, gives. Um, but I would like to highlight that the peer-to-peer -peer learning and the collaborative uh, research practice, which really means working together in the studio alongside uh, the research proposals or the research questions or the different practices that people are developing is the most powerful and the most useful thing that CERT has to offer. And the curious thing for us is actually, since we have founded CERT, um, uh, we, we, the one thing we really could not manage is to get rid of the people. So um, the cohorts that we have been working with um, uh, were so much uh, entangled with each other and so much immersed in the kind of dialogue they could establish that when the two years were over, they were simply telling us, uh, but we will continue. We will continue to use that structure of the quarterly. We will continue to use each other as this, let's say, working group together and we would appreciate if you would at least support us to host us. So what CERT has at the moment is um, three active cohorts and um, a fourth cohort that will start now. And all the cohorts that were end at the, at the two years are actually um, still circulating in the community. Um, maybe it's a kind of postdoc uh, uh, and, and it, it's similar to your experience. But as they circle in the community, um, they also have really an influence on how this program or how this structure uh, further develops. Um, this is a quote, I think a rather beautiful quote from uh, Julien Bruno. Uh, he's a dancer choreographer from Brussels and uh, Julien um, um, has contributed to a book that we just uh, published. It's called Fieldings. And in this book, we have tried to articulate um, what uh, CERT uh, has um, been doing. And we were trying to articulate that really through the different voices and through the different uh, perspectives of the participants. So in the beginning, we thought we make a handbook or a manual on, uh, on CERT cycle education, but actually then we understood this really doesn't make sense. Um, we are much more interested to, to articulate with a certain kind of sensibility, what is it actually that happens when these people work together? And here's another quote from, uh, oh no, I don't have another quote. <laughs> uh, no, yes, here's Fieldings. This is the book. I will also put the link in the chat because of course it exists as a, as a, as a published uh, object, but it, it also exists as a, as a PDF. Um, and here's another quote from uh, Julien. We continuously question how and why we are working together. And when we do go for an established format, it doesn't mean choosing the habitual and even less discarding the adventurous new. It means acknowledging the vivid pool of potentials still lying within the known format after considering different options and feeling how to best get to the heart of what must be unfolded problematized and turned around. So, I'd so I would like to offer such a, 
an, an initiative or such a structure as CERT as one of the possibilities to, for artistic researchers to organize themselves and organize themselves, let's say, in the shadow or in the, um, in the arms of an institution, not for the institution to, to take over, to do it for them, but for the institution really as a hosting entity so that their own sense of networking, cooperation, collaboration, joining <laughs> uh, can, can, can come into being. And I think this is the only role that we have as an institution, not to prescribe structures in which you have to function, but to um, uh, strengthen your own sense of what kind of uh, structures, what kind of modes of operation make sense for you. And I would like to end with um, 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 uh, advertising another book or advertising another source. You might uh, know it already for a long time. It's from C Cecile Condorelli, who has done beautiful research on the notion of support structures. Um, and this book is addressing artistic practices next to institutional formats, next to real objects. And I think for me, that is a kind of um, perspective um, that I feel very comfortable with to, to, to consider uh, possibilities like networks, like, like corporations as uh, support structures that can come in many, many different forms. So this photo is also from the book actually. Here I stop my slide.